Now there is no question that Faro and Ball make some incredible paint colors, but not everyone will be familiar with them or have access to their products. But not to worry because the paint people are here to save the day with another episode of Matchmaker, where we take paint colors from one company and match them into another company. This is especially useful with Faro and Ball specifically because they would be deemed as a premium paint brand that is usually at the higher price point and it's also not as readily available in certain regions. So today we're taking five Faro and Ball colors that we recently spoke about in a color review video and match them into comparable Benjamin Moore paint colors. You'll have an idea of which colors we're going to match if you've watched our color code episode on Preference Red. So spoiler, <laughs> that happens to be one of our 2022 colors of the year. And it's also the reason I kind of made a bit of a red background today. So before we jump into the matches themselves, I do want to preface this video, like all episodes of Matchmaker, these are close matches, but they're not spot on. This is especially the case because we're dealing with ferro and ball colors here, and they're all very pigment dense colors in general and can be very tricky to match. Not only that, but ferro and ball's entire process is singular, it's very unique. You're not gonna be tinting your can of ferro and ball, it's all gonna come pre-mixed. So we're dealing with two very different processes or processes, whatever's more grammatically correct. And while my matches are going to give you the same sort of effect, let them be a bit of a starting point for you. Having your local paint professional do a custom match for you is going to be your safest bet every single time. All right, so let's start with the chalky off-white known as Slipper Satin. The color gets its name from the traditional ballet slippers you might see, if you're a fan of ballet, of course. It's a great gentle off-white that feels silky and smooth. And even though it's advertised as being chalky or gray leaning, it's essentially free of any cooler undertones, making it more beige leaning than you might expect. And what I wanna do here with my matches is to give you two different options for each of the colors. The first one being Muskoka Trail, by Benjamin Moore. I think Muskoka Trail is one of the closest matches, especially when it comes to that level of depth. It's also pretty passive as a color, but it also feels a little more grayish than beige. If you wanna amp up that beige component, a nice alternative would be Maritime White. This has less of that apparent gray. It will feel a little more saturated and perhaps more of a subtle red warmth rather than yellow, but visually it does seem a tad closer undertone wise to Slipper Satin. Really, we're talking about an off-white here. <laughs> And there are plenty of options within Benjamin Moore's catalog that you can go with instead, but those are my two picks and I will definitely give them a solid B plus as matches. So pretty good, but not necessarily top of the class. Next up, we have the mid-tone color that I spoke about and it's called Old White. Old White by Ferro and Ball is actually a mid-tone color, which is not what you would expect. It resembles more of a warm gray green color. I do like that it's so neutral, even though it's dark. It almost feels like white because it just blends in seamlessly to its surroundings. The first match and probably the closer one, undertones wise at least, would be bleaker beige. With an LRV right at 52, this is a tried and true mid-tone color that really has that beautiful sandy quality to it with a real pleasant neutral warmth. Now, even though old white is advertised as a historic gray green color, the green is extremely subtle within it. My Benjamin Moore match that has a little more of that green would be Coastal Fog. It's sort of like the last one we did. We have one match in bleaker beige that is perhaps a bit closer to the color itself in terms of its undertones, but then you have Coastal Fog, which which to me just feels like the slightly easier to use option in my mind. I think Coastal Fog also gets a few extra points because it does seem a little closer to where I think designers are heading with those green undertone neutrals. And that's essentially what Coastal Fog is. Both are really solid options. I'll probably give them an A minus on the matching scale. It just depends on whether you want that added dose of green or not. The dark Faro and Ball color I wanted to take a look at is Tar from the California collection. And this is described as a soft off black. Much like off whites, off blacks are black leaning, but noticeably not a deadpan black. This is a great color we're talking about here, despite its three out of five star review on the Faro and Ball website. When I first saw that, I was like, huh? But it's actually because people were really annoyed when they ordered testers from Faro and Ball and they were expecting a little tester pot of paint, but instead just got a little swatch. 
I'd be kind of disappointed too. My preferred way to test any paint color is to not settle for just a simple swatch, but getting actual paint somehow, grabbing a mighty board and painting it. So now you have a mighty sized paint swatch that has real paint applied to it so you can bring it around your home wherever you're painting. As always, some Mighty Boards information will be linked down below if you're interested in some yourself. The two black paint colors by Benjamin Moore that come pretty close to tar on either end. The first one being wrought iron, which is one of those quintessential charcoal or slate gray colors by Benjamin Moore. Although to me, it does have just a touch more coolness to it, being pretty close to black. It's not gonna feel overly blue either. It just sort of has that visual effect. And tar on the other hand has just a touch of dusty earthiness to it. So if you wanted to double down on that aspect of the color, you have Benjamin Moore's Iron Mountain. And that's the other match, which is just a tad softer in general because of its higher LRV, but it also brings a bit more of a slight brown undertone to it too. If I'm going with clean whites and cooler grays. Rod iron is what I would probably reach for first, but if I was incorporating a lot more creams, browns, and warmer colors in general, then maybe Iron Mountain would be the play. Or if you're lucky to have Ferrum Ball, you just go with tar and you'll be good either way. <laughs> I'll give this match an A- minus as well, because although neither are a real perfect spot on match, you do have two different flavors of tar that you can indulge in. <laughs> Why did I do that? Moving on to the off-white color by Pharaoh and Ball, we have the curiously named Salt. This is another color from the California collection that Tar came from, and that's why they're actually a classic combination that I love putting together. So it really was a very easy fit. Quite easy. Don't think of this as just a crisp stark white like your table salt might be, but more so reminiscent of a big salt crystal or something. And it's just a bit gray and perhaps has the slightest touch of pinky purple as well. The first match I found for it is a color called White Winged Dove, which is a mouthful. <laughs> and it's also another really great off white that I would almost call a gruge or <laughs> a gray rouge type of color. And I thought it was pretty good until I put it next to Alamode by Benjamin Moore. Alamode specifically gets the first A rating in terms of matches because it's quite close. To me, there's very few matches that will properly earn an A plus rating because it's just so hard to completely nail two colors from two different companies without customizing them after the fact. But Alamode comes very close to salt as a color and they'll give you a very similar effect. They're both a tiny bit gray with a tiny bit of warmth and they almost have that pearlescent airy crispness that makes this off-white pretty unique, especially in a sea of grayish and <laughs> yellow-based grays. This one is different. But we can't talk about these Pharaoh and Ball colors without matching Preference Red. And this was the main subject of conversation in that color review. Preference Red was our breathtaking color of the year for 2022. And to me, it was the standout color. It's a deep, rich red that has just a bit of burgundy, perhaps a tiny bit of violet as well. And even though it's rich and regal, it has this very slight, soft edge to it that prevents it from feeling overly dark and deep. The closest match I could find was a color called Ruby Dusk by Benjamin Moore, and they do share a lot of similarities. The only thing I'll say is there seems to be a little bit more of a red clay type of coloration in the Benjamin Moore one, and you're lacking a bit of that red wine aesthetic from the Pharaoh Ball color. And that's why I wanted to also present Bordeaux Red as a match. Although that one just has a touch more of that purple undertone in comparison. So if that's the aspect of Preference Red that you're really into, then perhaps Bordeaux Red would just be a better option overall for you. These two matches I would put at an A- minus as well because there's really nothing that can compete with Preference Red on its own to me. If you wanna know more about these colors and how to incorporate them, you can check out our Preference Red review right over here.